John has become a very, very important part of this giant offensive picture now. And a very popular guy. When he was introduced today, he got the biggest hand of all the Giants. And in talking to Phil Simms yesterday, he said two things we have to do today is, one, we have to spread them out. So they're going to use a lot of three wide receivers. Then the other thing we have to do, he said, is keep them off balance so the Giants are going to use a little no-huddle today. And what about the Eagles? What's their approach? Well, of course, they want Jim McMahon just to keep drives alive, give him that winning attitude that he does, and then they want to run the ball. And the interesting thing, Pat, is they're going to run right at Lawrence Taylor. Well, they figure that cuts down some of that great pursuit that he's had over all the years. Ruzek to kick it off in the direction of Hampton and Megan. An unseasonably warm day for this time of year in the Meadowlands. Very little wind, and it's almost hot. The Eagles have won six out of the seven meetings. Landetta back to 
Macklin. For the Giants, Rod Harris back deep for the Eagles. Harris at about his own 10-yard line. get it down. It trickled into the end zone. So we'll check out the penalty. Odessa Turner tried to bat it back. And they couldn't come up with a handle. Tom White is the referee. there because the ball would have, would have been out there in the one yard line. Blocking after a fair catch signal. Number 80, half the distance to the goal for the first down for Philadelphia. Timeout. Nothing, nothing in the first quarter. 11.59 left to play. The Eagles would take over deep in their own territory. Just inside their four. Rod Harris, the punt returner, he fair catches. Now, after you fair catch, you don't have to catch it. You can let it go, but you can't make a fair catch signal and then block, and that's what the penalty was for. Wasn't much of a block, though. Jim McMahon opens at quarterback. In front of him, Heller, McKnight, Alexander, Soap, Davis, the rookie, Keith Jackson, the tight end, Joseph and Byers, the runners, Barnett and Williams, the wide receiver. Stopped by Guyton and Freeman starting at nose tackle. 
picked up that penalty against the Eagles by by his voice inflection. You know, one thing, you get an aggressive defense and your quarterback can really help you the way Sims did on that play. Offside, number 74 defense in the neutral zone. Mike snap, Pitts five yards. Is the man who jumps. You see, you're going to see it, but the thing that gets Pitts to do this is Phil Sims. See, he's, he's changing his voice inflection. You know, and then he gives him that hard count, that hard hut, and that moves him just enough to get him in the neutral zone. First and five. Shannon. Baker. Out of bounds. First down. I think one thing, if the Giants are when they're going to pass, I think they're going to work mostly on that side. Try and work against Izell Jenkins, number 46, the left corner, and maybe away from Eric Allen, number 21, the best corner of the Eagles. They look around the league at all those scores. Nobody has scored yet. That's just getting started. They haven't had time. This is happening. this defense you have to run straight at it you know you can't throw screens you can't run sideways and do a lot of sweeping and stuff because they pursue so well and if you just look at the type of game plan that they've had so far everything has been boom just running and slashing right at that eagle defense and it has them back on their heels second and five hampton the lone runner again he takes the handle hampton stopped by simmons he got three, it'll bring up third and two. Simmons got him in a hole there that he might not let him up. <laughs> that would have been a pin right there. You could have got one, two, three, it's over. He's probably of this group. Clyde Simmons is probably the most underrated. You always think of Reggie White. They're one of the best that's ever played the game. Jerome Brown, 99, he stops thing in the middle. And Clyde Sims has as many sacks as Reggie White does. But over the years, he has been the guy that's really given the Giants fits. Yeah, he always comes up with some crazy play, like an intercepted pass or blocked field goal or something. So much trouble inside that red zone, the red zone being once you get inside the 20, that what they're trying to do is hit in front of it instead of throwing it in the end zone. See, the Eagles are going to defend the end zone. You cut in front and you hit it down at about the two or three yard line. Now that's okay if you can get the ball in from there. Watch what Phil Sims has to throw through to get the ball to Ingram. First and goal of the four.
Well, you can look at what Phil Simms thought. Maybe he was looking out here, and he wanted to throw a slant in here, and he saw this, and that took him away. But if he just would have looked over here to his right, this is just man on man, and it doesn't get any better than that. I think that was exactly what you're looking for. I think he was trying to throw a slant to the left, and he should have come back to the one on one on the right. And there was a guy sitting in there to his left. And he couldn't throw the slant there. Man, man. Everybody jump. Everybody points. Hard to figure out who's guilty. Well, that's the first thing you do after the after the official throws the flag. You start pointing at the other guy. Ball start. Number 30, moving prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. Make it. Still third down. Uh, Dave make it. See, he can't go forward now. Now he could have gone forward and then set for a second, or he could have gone laterally in motion. But he couldn't go forward and not set. You see. Looked like he read blitz and he was going to have to block and he stepped up there, but he didn't set for a second after he went forward. So it's third and goal at the eighth.
few quarterbacks in the league that plays with gloves. He got stuff on his wrists. He got a pad on his elbow. Offside, number 76, in the neutral zone, second down. He had an interesting comment for you before the game. We were down on the field. But you ask him, how does he play with all those injuries? He said, you just have to let your body know who's the boss. <laughs> That's all it is. Teach that body who's the boss. Joseph is the deep back. Freeman, the first to make the hit on James Joseph. The other thing is, is I don't think you're going to make a, a living running on that left side of the of the giant defense. Uh, you know, you got a nose tackle there. You got uh, Leonard Marshall there. You got Lawrence Taylor there on running downs. And even though Lawrence Taylor is nicked up, maybe he's a little slower. He's still one of the best players in this league. They go with just two down linemen now, Howard and Marshall. McMahon back to throw. To Roy Green. Wiley won. Uh, he is, and he can still run. You know, Roy Green, when he came into this league, he was a defensive back. Then they made a wide receiver out of him, and then he was like, you know, 4'3", 40. So... When he loses a step, he still has enough speed to play. I think he, he, he's been a welcome addition. You know, the Eagles didn't use a third wide receiver on passing downs. They used to keep Jackson and Byers in there. Then they picked up Roy Green, and he's their third down go-to guy now. And he's also been a great help to the young receivers. hits Jim McMahon can take because you know we're not only talking about his elbow here we're talking about his right ankle and his right knee maybe the worst thing of all is the knee but watch his pressure from his backside Heller's blocking Taylor and watch him just as he throws he gets it from the back and from Fox right up in the front so that's the the old double team and I think I think that bothered McMahon's knee on that on that shot second and seven He's a tough guy, but you have to wonder how much he can take. Uh, Joseph. Thank you, Jay. Across midfield, another first down. He got nine. Carl Banks made the stop. Giant Stadium, first quarter, 245 left to play. Now the clock running down lower than that. Pat Summerall here with John Madden. The Giants leading 7-0. Yeah, I was talking to Gary Reason yesterday, and he said the first time they played the Eagles, James Joseph was a rookie, and they didn't know who he was. And he said, this guy comes in there, number 32, and he starts running. He said, they missed a lot of tackles on him. He said, Reason said himself included, he said, because they never saw him on tape, they didn't know him. But now, this time, they know him. He is big and deceptively fast. Here he is again. Plus the 45, stopped by Banks again, but he got four yards. Hey, you know, they started, they were going to run to the left, and now they look like they've taken that thing and they're going in the middle. Watch a push in the middle on the nose tackle. They got him going backward. They got Pepper Johnson, a linebacker, going backwards. When you get a nose tackle going backwards, you're always going to gain at least three yards. Joseph, five carries for 15 yards. Second and six, the Eagles at the Giant 44. Big man to throw. Outside, Byer. Byer. He's hit by about six different Giants before he goes down. You can see that Everson Walls. And I'll tell you, it, back takes, in. it takes about that many guys to get Byers down. See the 60 on the on the back of the Eagles helmets. That's for the Detroit Lion Mike Utley that was was paralyzed uh, against the Rams. And it's one of those things in football. You know, you go out and you compete, you play hard, but you don't want to 
see anyone injured. And when you do, you realize and all the players realize that everyone's in it together. And that's what the Eagles are showing here, that, you know, that they are playing for the Eagles. They're playing here against the Giants, but Mike Utley is on their minds also. That last little surge by Byers got enough for an Eagle first down. Randall Cunningham back with the baseball cap on. It's interesting. Randall Cunningham is in street clothes on this side, and on the other sideline, Jeff Hostetler is uh, on the Giants sideline. Williams was the man in motion. McMahon to throw, chased by Marshall, but to Byers incomplete. And a flag on the play. Look how big that Byers is, though. I mean, he is so big and strong. He weighs over 240 pounds. Collins comes up to tackle him, and it's like he ran into a fire hydrant. I mean, he didn't even move him at all. He just knocked the towel out. I mean, Byers, the whole body stays there, and the only thing that flies out is a little towel. That's embarrassing. Here you are, Mark Collins. You come up, boom, you're going to give it your best shot, and all that flies out is a towel. Oh. Holding. Number 73 offense on a takedown, 10 yards, still first down. Watch you hit here. Boom. <laughs> Nothing happens to Byers. The towel flies out, and that's it. There's Jeff Hostetler. He won't be coming up too close to the sideline where he might get involved in some kind of a collision. I talked to him before the game. He said he was still sore. But progressing nicely. He still looked like he was sore. Just sitting there, he looked sore. Outside to Green. Roy Green to the Giant 40. Pepper Johnson made the stop. Green got eight yards. Now that's a difference. We saw one play where Byers is a power guy. A guy hits him. The only thing that comes out is the is his is flag. And then we see this one. Roy Green. Now he's a speed guy. Now when you get the the speed guy going, the first thing that hits a boom, they're going to go down. Whap! Right there. That's the end of the play. So you got your power and you got your speed. Second and twelve coming up. That's the end of the first quarter with the score, the Giants 7, the Eagles, no score yet. Well, Cunningham, who says he's progressing nicely. He came out earlier and threw a little bit. Now, I was surprised that he really wasn't limping at all. I, I, I talked to him earlier, and he said he's, he's feeling fine, and I was watching him. He's walking normally and moving around. The players say that he's starting to hang around the locker room, and he's starting to get a little frisky. He's starting to move around there, move his feet a little on the floor. Second and 12. Giants showing blitz. Now they back out of it. Oh. 
Jets and the Raiders can clinch playoff berths with wins today. 20 teams are still alive for a spot in the playoffs. And this is week 14. Yeah, we saw Jim McMahon over there talking to the medical staff, and I think he passed that test because he's back up there talking to the head coach. I've always found that that means they're going to play that and the fact that they keep their helmet on. First and ten Giants. That's Megan in motion. They're at their own three-yard line. Sends the throw it out of the end zone. He just got out of the end zone. Very nearly a safety. That's always the dangerous part about throwing out of that end zone. Of course, if you take a, a sack, it can be a safety. The other thing is if there's a penalty in the end zone, in other words, say that one of those linemen hold back in the end zone, then that also is a safety. So there's a couple of bad things that can happen when you pass it out of your own end zone. Of course, a good thing that can happen is, boom, you can strike quickly. The word on McMahon is that he has a jammed right knee and probably will be able to return. Second and 12, back at about the one foot line. Thompson, as you might expect. 
Speck, who was blocked in the back. 7-0. The Giants Stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden. 7-0. Giants lead the Eagles second quarter. 12-42 left to play in the first half. He fires his lone setback now.
the defensive right back right Brown coming from the back side. As I said, he not only got knocked down, but he got spun around. He ended up going backwards. I'll tell you one thing about McMahon, you can never question his competitiveness or his toughness. And the thing that surprises a lot of people, and I'm not sure why, but how bright he is. This is a very bright man. Almost to a man, the Eagles were saying, well, from what we had heard about him, we didn't care for him. But now that they all know him, they all say, we really like the guy, we respect the guy. Reggie White, in fact, apologized for not liking him before he knew him. He apologized to him. Roy Green was the man in motion. Here comes a cornerback blitz again. Pass is caught by Jackson. Not enough for the first down inside the 30. That'll put him into field goal range, however. And I think the other thing they did is after McMahon got knocked down, they came right back with a pass to show that they lost their pass protection, but they reestablished that they could pass protect for him. They had that cornerback or safety blitz or whatever it is picked up that time. 46 yards away. lead 949 left to play in the first half both teams needing victory yeah you can't beat this so Pat a December day it's a little warmer than normal but the Eagles and the Giants you know in the fight and the type of battles this kind of represents what what football is all about three more games left to go playoff implications do or die all those types of things and to me, this is what it's all about. This is the most fun time of the football regular season. Megan goes at the three. Comes out of there with it. Megan. Out of bounds at the 46, finally, by Robert Drummond. Hey, he makes a great move here at the end. Of course, it's on the kicker, number seven, Roger Rusek. But watch him. He just puts Rusek down. Watch seven come in there. He made a move on him. The Rusek just fell on his back. And he made about ten more yards. Dave Megan is one of the guys who can break any play in any game. That's why you like to have him in the game as much as you can. Because he can just drop kickers to their backs. can't sit on 
Justin Turner kind of slipped, made a bad pattern. He should have fought for that ball. Once he slipped and come out, if if Sims is going to throw it, boom, then you have to go out and become the defender too. Heck of a play by Eric Allen. Good pass rush. Not very good by Sims or Odessa Turner. So the Eagles will take over first and 10 at their own 38. A handoff is to Jones. Hit behind the line by Marshall. Settle down by Pepper Johnson. We're at Giant Stadium. Second quarter score, 7 3 Giants. Pat Summerall with John Madden. It'll bring up a second and 12 for the Eagles. And the Eagle game plan when they run is to run right at Lawrence Taylor. That also means for the most part you're running right at Leonard Marshall, which to me is still the strength of this giant defense. No question about that. Here's McMahon limping back with the pass protection. And throws it out of bounds. Barnett, the intended receiver. McMahon is still down. He was hit by Lorenzo Freeman. Well, Lorenzo Freeman really unloaded on him. McMahon stood in there. He was waving his receiver down, waving him down. You see him there? Then he had to hang in there and watch Lorenzo Freeman. You know, it's not only the hit when Freeman hits him, but then the thing that really gets him on artificial turf is when they hit the ground. That's and the when he hits him. on top of him, 320 pounds. Yeah, I mean, that's bringing a load, and you get that initial contact, that jolts you, and then the next contact, when you hit the ground, is really the damaging one. And I think that's going to bring Jeff Kemp in this game. Jeff Kemp, number 16. McMahon still down on his knees. That's McMahon still down on one knee. Randall Cunningham warming up the new quarterback, Jeff Kemp. Well, you know, Jeff Kemp came in last Monday night, threw a big touchdown pass to Keith Jackson, and they're winning against the Oilers, and Jeff Kemp has a lot of confidence. He's, a, he's also a bright guy. He's been around a long time. He has 11 years in the league, knows football, and the players also have confidence in him. Tell you, Jim McMahon really hung in there on didn't that he? pass, and, and he didn't have to. You know, I mean, he, he, he could have, if he had the, kind, the type of mind that wanted to protect himself, he could have stepped out of bounds and not gotten hit. But he stayed just inside and hung in there. Watch him here. He could have just stepped out of bounds. But he hangs in there and hangs in there and knows that he's going to get that hit to throw that ball. And yeah, that's a big load on top of him. 7-3. Jeff Kemp is the quarterback replacing Jim McMahon third and 12. Here comes the heat. Kemp going deep. The pass is going to be picked off by Collins and here is Collins back to midfield. Still on his feet and still on his feet. And finally down at the Eagles 34-yard line. Roy Green finally got him down. 39-yard great effort pass interception returned by Collins. Hey, Rich Kotite wanted to take a shot. He called the play, told Jeff Kemp, let's try and get one, come off the bench and get one. Mark Collins makes a good interception and then an exceptional effort. He gets some good blocks, but watch him here. He runs through a tackle by Byers. The big tackle there, they thought they got him. No one has him. He just kept those feet going, trying to pick up yards. And remember last week, he couldn't play because he had bad ribs. This is Ron Heller, who's now down and injured. He hurt his ankle last week, the last Monday night against Houston. That's Jim McMahon's roommate. That's going to be an infirmary tonight. Now McMahon said that he was trying to teach Heller to teach the body who's boss. And they could both talk about that right now. Heller said, I haven't learned it yet. Uh, and I would I would think just looking at McMahon, and we haven't heard exactly what the thing is, but I would think he's going to be back in this game. It looks like. 
Reggie White does in a game. The play before, Doug Riesenberg jumps offside. This time, you see him out there, Reggie White, he's up on the top, 92. He works against Riesenberg, boom, he comes to the inside on him right there, and then he hits Sims just as he throws the ball. That'll make it second and goal from the 14.
Devin leads. Maggot comes across here, so Sims just hits him here, boom, and he got the screen pass, the one-man screen going down the sideline. You see Maggot's on the left side of Sims. See him cross over? Now see the guard out in front. We can stop it right now. This is the perfect play. Here is Maggot. Here is Cratch. Here is the goal line. That is perfect. That's the way you draw up the play. All Maggot has to do is follow Cratch. Watch Riesenberg cut down Reggie White. He has to cut him down so that they can throw the screen over him. Now watch Cratch out there leading him. Boom, he gets the block right there. And Maggot goes sideways into the end zone.
starts at noon Eastern with the NFL Today, the last word before kickoff. Then at 12.30 Eastern, the NFL on CBS continues when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Chicago Bears. And at 3.45 Eastern time, it's college basketball. Number one ranked Duke travels to Ann Arbor, Michigan to play the Wolverines. That's Saturday on CBS.
Pepper Johnson, the inside rusher that time. They got Lawrence Taylor on a couple plays in a row there. They got him on that one, the quarterback running. On the play before that, they faked the run and got him on the bootleg. So Lawrence Taylor is a, a very emotional guy, and I think his emotion level is going to raise here. James Joseph is the ball carrier. Bounces off one tackle, gets down to about the 17. Got a yard, Mark Collins. And Carl Banks wrapped him up. Mark Collins didn't put on weight, Pat. Those just rib pads he's wearing there. He has bad ribs. 14-3. That's the Bears and the Bucks. Next Saturday here on CBS. Oh! 
across your body. Jeff Kemp did all those things. Watch him. He's going to get flushed out. It wasn't a rollout. Now he's going to get flushed out, throw across his body, back into the middle. Those are all things from quarterback 1A you say don't do. He did them all and got a touchdown. Extra point is good. Makes it 14-10. That's worth another look, that throw. This is tough. This is a tough throw. He had to learn that one at Dartmouth. That's something that comes out of the Ivy League. You don't get that one in the NFL. Maybe he learned it from his father. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jack Kemp, of course, was the quarterback for the San Diego Chargers, the Buffalo Bills, and one of the real good quarterbacks that played in this game. He and then also a quarterback here with the Giants. Yeah, and then Jeff Kemp, you know, you keep thinking he's a young guy, and you remember when he was a rookie, and you look down, and it's his 11th year already. He was really upset when he was cut. He started for the Seattle Seahawks this year and had a bad game, and they cut him the next day, and I think it upset him and embarrassed him, and he said one of his happiest days was when he got picked up by the Philadelphia Eagles. That will really demoralize the defense. So will that. That's Al Bro, the defensive coordinator. No one says they don't have any emotion. <laughs> He's trying to put some emotion in them. He probably thought that he shouldn't have been flushed out, that they should have had him on the sack and not let him run to make that throw. He pulled his own chain. He was a man. <laughs> Getting ready for the halftime feast out in the parking lot. That looks like uh, how much time we have. Well, this is good. Look at this. They got the kibasa in there, kibasa and sauerkraut, deer meat. They got this year bubbling. That's that's sweet potatoes. You always have to have them on the side there. Yams. Yep. And you can't beat this. Some bagels. Bagels and some different spreads there. <laughs> I think I know that one wasn't out in the parking lot. That That's one on the was bus. on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> That's breakfast on the bus before the game. You kidding me? Where'd that come from? Here's a handoff to Megan. Lock continues to run three yards for Megan. Jerome Brown made the stop. 25 seconds left to play in the first half. The clock's still running. Sims is going to try to get another one off. to Baker. Flags before it started. I don't think I've ever seen Al grow as upset as he was on Number that play. Moving prior to the snap, five yard penalty, still second down. Because they really had everything going. They had the, you know, 14 to 3 lead. They had knocked the starting quarterback out of the game. Everything looked like it was going their way and Jeff Kemp comes up with a big, big play. Speaking of Jeffs, Jeff Hostetler headed to the locker room. To be very careful not to get banged around or run into by anyone. Second and 12. That should do it for the first half. That is the end of the first half with the score of the Giants 14, the Eagles 10. the Giants Stadium. It's the Giants 14. The Eagles who scored just before the half ended 10. And so they closed the gap and they're just beginning to return back to the playing field. John, it seems to have gone uh, pretty much according to plan uh, the way we talked to both teams last night and yesterday. Well, you know, the defense has to get the field position because if you just think of the offenses in the first half, if they had good field position, they were able to get the ball in the end zone. If they don't have good field position, ne neither one of these offenses are the type of offense that's going to take the ball and drive it 80 yards. What about the situation with McMahon? Uh, Jeff Kemp, uh, it looks like the team has a lot of faith in him. Well, I think so. I mean, Jim McMahon is the type of guy, uh, 
uh, he got driven into the turf. Uh, he got injured. They went in. They x-rayed him. He's come out of x-rays. And if there's nothing broken, I'm sure Jim McMahon, knowing Jim McMahon and the competitor is, he will be back there and play in the second half. But and if you say, if, even if he doesn't, Jeff Kemp is very capable. We still have no word on the condition of Jim McMahon, but uh, Phil Sims and Jeff Kemp both have been effective in the first half. Well, and the and the thing is, is I, I still think this is going to be defense. You know, can the Giants hold them off? Because they've been having a trouble all year. They will get a lead and they will play well and then they just in the fourth quarter they just have these letdowns both offensively and defensively. Is that going to happen again today? So we're just about ready to begin the second half with the Giants leading the Eagles 14-10. Uh, rather unique way to play the drum you'd have to say. McDonald's welcomes you to Neverland from Steven Spielberg's new movie, Hook, where you'll find the Never Tree and where there's... Never food! Never food! There's never food. Look! It's snowing! So in the spirit of the season, McDonald's is offering something special. McDonald's gift certificates in $5 books. Play. That bar to kick it off. Giants leading the Eagles 14 to 10. The Eagles have won six out of the last seven meetings. Between these two, Jim McMahon, as John Madden said a moment ago, has returned to the sideline. But whether you'll be able to continue or not, I don't know. Rod Harris and Keith Sherman back deep. The bars kick. Gonna be Harris at the five. Seven. 22 yard return, a half time, half time statistics. Pretty even. You know, and I think the big thing is the, you know, that drive that the Eagles got just before half. Remember, there was a big run by Jeff Kemp. There was a 15 yard penalty against the Giants that I still do not understand how a guy is supposed to stop when he's in that position. Then there was a great throw by Jeff Kemp or the score would have been 14 to 3. Jeff Kemp is the quarterback. He fires the lone running back behind him. Fires comes up field for nothing. Eric Dorsey out to toss him back. Yeah, if you look at the at the Giants, Pat, here's what we're talking about is everything in these first three quarters are pretty well. It's kind of like the old Giants, but this is where they've had trouble in that fourth quarter where their opponents have outscored them almost two to one. Second and nine, and now as I look at the Eagle bench, I can't find Jim McMahon. I don't believe he is back. Jeff Kemp's the quarterback. is 
Obviously, he was having so much trouble breathing, and he will not be back. So it's on the shoulders of Jeff Kemp. Yeah, and, uh, you know, again, it was the thing. He was, he was hit by Lorenzo Freeman, and it wasn't the initial hit, but it was the hit when Freeman drove him into the carpet. A legal hit and everything, but it was a contact on the carpet that got Jim McMahon.
going to be exposed more in the open field than it is rushing. You see him, he's, he's going to try and drop back. He dropped back on that play, and he couldn't even get in to make a play on Byers. That was Carl Banks that, that hit Byers that knocked the ball out. But Taylor dropped back in that zone, and the pass was thrown in that zone, and he was just unable to move. There was nothing he could do about playing, making the play on that. to Gil Fennerty for four yards, gets the Cowboys down one. The Saints are up as they look for a playoff berth. We'll have all the highlights on the postgame show. It's 14-13 New Orleans in the third. Giant Stadium, 14-10. What's that block by Williams? Well, there you are. That's what you call a decleater. When you hit the guy and boom, the cleats pop right out of the air. Second and five. changing the pace. He's the Eagles leading rusher. That's the way it used to be when Randall Cunningham was quarterback in the Eagles. Kemp was run for 30 yards three times. And of course one of his biggest times was when he ran and they thought he was going to run and he passed across the body running to his right, throwing to the left in the middle. He can't beat that one. That got the touchdown. Third and four out of the shotgun. Why? 
right, and, and the amazing thing about him is, you know, he's big and he's strong, but that he's as fast as he is. In fact, he went right by Doug Riesenberg. Doug Riesenberg, Riesenberg hurt himself on this. Watch Reggie White. He's right here down at the bottom, Offside. and he is going to come, and he just comes with that arm under Riesenberg, just goes right by him and plants Phil Sims. Yeah, I was asking him the different types of move he has. He says he has a pop shoulder and go, a bull rush, a rip rush, a club rush, and a speed rush. That was a rip. You said, yeah, what did we just see? That was a rip. Third and five. And you got a guy that big and that strong and that fast with that many moves, it's a long day. The scary thing about it is that speed. The ball hit Joyner in the helmet, I think. But Phil Sims was upset. He was telling that that umpire, you see that the, the official was there, and he was telling that official, you got to get out of the way. You know, it's tough enough to complete a pass against the defense without having the official running in the way and getting in the way of your reception. That's what Phil Sims was upset about. And then I back to punt it. Aiming for the corner. Odessa Turner threw it backwards, and the Giants go down it at the one-yard line. Renee Thompson, a 40-yard punt down at the one by the Giants. They lead 14-10. Behind the defense right here is called the umpire. He's responsible for holding and stuff in this area. Usually when the ball snapped, he moves up. Now, he didn't move up. He moved back, and he was the official that got in the way. First of all, he's a little deep there, but see him not move up? He should go all the way up and watch those linemen. He stays deep, and right there, he gets in the way of Maggot and the ball and the reception. That would have been a completion. That's why Phil Sims was mad. Well, the Eagles take over deep in their own territory. Heath Sherman. Having the game as a running back. And Sherman gets outside the five. That was a good effort. He was hit behind the line of scrimmage. You know, and then after that play, we had another great play by Odessa Turner. Watch him. He catches the ball on a fly, just throws it back, which is legal. Everything is legal. And then it's touched down by Renee Thompson. That was a heck of a punt, heck of a play by Odessa Turner. And then good position by Renee Thompson. Not good position by the umpire. No. Second down and about five at the eight for the Eagles. Barnett, the man in motion. Kemp fake to Joseph, and he's off to the racer. Ken Kemp gets the Eagles some room. Outside the 20, a 16-yard scramble. Walls tripped him up. And now they're taking advantage of Lawrence Taylor on this side again. Watch your bootleg. You fake your running back to that way, put the ball on your hip, and come a bootlegging out. You see what it did to the defense? Watch, you fake to the right. See, the whole defense goes boom down there. You keep the ball. You come out here. You bootleg away from the flow. They took advantage of Lawrence Taylor on that one, and he just can't move. He, he just can't move to his right and get outside on that play. He's out. Pepper Johnson moves outside. In Taylor's place. Here's Kemp. Shovels it out to Byers with blockers in front. Byers is tripped up just as he made his cut. Back to the inside. Collins made the stop. Further word on Jim McMahon is he has no broken ribs, but he has bruised cartilage in the rib area, and that's what's calling, causing him the pain. You know, and if you've ever had a, a rib cartilage, that's sometimes more painful than broken ribs and rib cartilage is one of those things that you move your arm and your ribs hurt you cough and your ribs hurt you you laugh and it hurts and anything you do you can any movement you make it hurts in that area and there's no way when it's fresh that you can play football i wonder if jim mcmahon has any moving parts that haven't been hurt well that's that's the thing i mean that was one of the problems with the mri they tried to put him in that machine and the position that they had to put his right arm, elbow, and shoulder, he couldn't take that position. Second and about a foot, just over six minutes left in the third quarter. Myers is the running back. He got a foot, that's about all. You can get almost anything you want <laughs> if you're sick. 
for you. We never had stuff like that in the old days. No. Like they got analgesic. They got stuff that sounds like Italian food. Band-aids, they got your different kind, you know, your basic rubs. And they got stuff for your ears, eyes, nose, throat. You got that whole thing. And then they got preps and stuff, solutions. That's what I need a lot of is solutions. Ointments, if you I need an use, ointment. I could use some ointments. Suture, if you want to stitch something up. Hand and finger. There's a foot. Just, just plain old foot, not feet. Yeah, if you need parts, uh, you got the parts here. Mole screen, instruments. <laughs> you got, uh, well, whatever you I, need. I know it. There's a... Uh, you got knees and stuff over there. <laughs> knees, sleeves. Assorted tapes. That's a neat little uh, package. You just roll it out, you got everything you need. You can operate right there. There's Kemp back to throw it. Going deep. seven-yard line and that balls is still on the ground that's what no, we were talking to that's what we were talking to Barnett about last night and we were saying that Roy Green used to be able to run through zone defenses and still catch the ball when you're double team watch this you shouldn't throw this pass the guy's double team there are two guys on Fred Barnett he gets by both of the guys on him that's Guyton that's hurt Walls was the other defender. He's okay. Guyton still down. But but Barnett was saying if you have the speed, here's Barnett out here. Now if you have the speed, this is going to end up in a double team that you can run right through and right past a double team. Now watch him. He just does this with speed. You see it right there. Now they got him inside out. Now, if you can get a step right in that position right there, you can complete a pass against double teams and zones. I was telling Fred Barnett that Roy Green in the old days was one of the few guys that I ever saw that could do that. And he looked at me and he says, it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> and then he just did it. If you can run, it's easy. Tonight on CBS, okay, try this. What's the country and western capital of the United States? Nashville? No, it's not. It's Branson, Missouri. Branson, Missouri. That's right. They've got more theater seats than they have on Broadway. 60 Minutes has a whole block of them reserved for tonight. Then it's Brooklyn Bridge. Bette Midler and Barbara Hershey star in the CBS Sunday movie, Beaches. That's tonight on CBS. like uh, Myron Guyton when he went down there looked like something happened in the area of his helmet or his eyes the doctor was checking that and having him read something but then they're helping him off the field you know with both arms but it looked like something happened in the in the area of the face or eyes as a 57 yard gain Kemp to Barnett And look like they're they're down there with Myron Guyton, and it looked like they're having him check his eyes, you know, and look down, and then to look up to do those things. I'll tell you, that was a heck of a throw by Jeff Kemp into double coverage. And Fred Barnett just out running it and getting a step. First and goal at the eight for the Eagles. at Jeff Kemp, you think he's not a, a big guy. He's only six foot. Most quarterbacks are in that six three, six foot four range. But Jeff Kemp does and always has had a strong arm. And his dad was the same way. You know, I mean, not the big physical quarterback, but carried a big physical arm with him. Threw the ball very hard. So does Jeff. But he can throw it a long way. Taking advantage of that too, and in fact, he 
probably shouldn't be in there because you know he just he just can't catch that one now this isn't the worst thing if he can just run on a straight line he's okay but it's when he has to make moves and come off of things and turns and stuff that he just can't do it you know you can just go so far on guts alone and somewhere you have to have the rest of your parts working third and goal at the four
with the other arm, and he comes in the backside. And then after he got there, he didn't just want a sack. He wanted a strip and a fumble, too. It's amazing all the moves that, that these defensive ends have, the, the rips and the arm over and the speed. And yeah, the almost, almost like the pass receivers now with all those moves. You know, and I think Clyde Simmons used a combination of two or three on Jumbo Elliott. Third down. Sims. Pass is picked off by Otis Smith. Eagle football. Ed McCaffrey was the intended receiver. I think that was Phil Sims took too much off of that one. You know, I think he, think, he, he thought he had McCaffrey instead of drilling it. Instead of taking that ball and zipping it in there, he kind of laid it out there. And he laid it out there a little too much, and that let Otis Smith come underneath and make the pickoff. That's his first career interception. I'll tell you, he's going to take that ball home with him, and, si and Phil Sims is going to know that. Phil Sims knows that he took too much off of that ball. And for the quarterback, first and ten Eagles at their own 39-yard line. They trail by a point. Is back to throw. Gets it outside to Keith Jackson. Jackson with a good second effort gets close to first down yardage. Johnson flag on the play. The Eagles look like it's against the Giants. Well, and that's that's the unnecessary roughness, and that's a big 15-yard penalty. That's going to put them well into Giant territory. Unnecessary roughness, number 99 on New York after the play is over. First down. First down, Eagles. They are down by a point. Number 99 was Steve Biasi. We're talking about Jim McMahon wearing that, that shield. Diossi was probably the first guy to wear the shield. Johnson was the man in motion. This is Byers. Stadium in the Meadowlands of East Rutherford, New Jersey. Matt Summerall with John Madden, third quarter, a minute 20, a minute 20 left now. And the Giants leading the Eagles by a point. You know, Myron Guyton, I see Pat is back in there. They, they say that what happened on that play that Fred Barnett caught that, that big deep one against double coverage that Guyton had his eye scratched, and that's what it looked like they were taking care of in the sideline. What it was, he's okay and back in there now. Second and two at the 28. Fires again. Fires will have an eagle first down. Pepper Johnson on the stop. He needed two, he got two. Yeah, you look at Lawrence Taylor's leg now, and, and we, we, we saw him put that, that tape job on, and I think they put the brace back on over the tape job because he looks like he has more now on that left leg than he had he before. So instead of getting less equipment on it, they were taking the pants off to put put more equipment in or protection on that left knee. They're going to measure to see if Byers got the first down. It appeared that he did. First down, the Giants. First downs, the Giants have only six. Now the Giants just haven't been able to put anything together. And the Eagles have a lot of uh, Jeff Kemp. I mean, Jeff Kemp's bootlegging and running have been a big part of their offense. James Joseph is the running back this time. Johnson in motion. they needed. That's that same hole that we talked about before. Where, where we show where Lawrence Taylor comes up the field. You see on the left-hand side of the screen. You see that gap in there when he comes up the field. They've made big, big yardage in that gap. But they're not going to make big yardage if Pepper Johnson fills it like that. That's 
almost the end of the third quarter with the score. The Giants 14 deep. Getting ready for the fourth quarter at Giant Stadium. And it hasn't been a kind quarter to the Giants during the year. What has happened to them? Well, you know, they talk about pride, and this is going to be a pride week and all this. Pride isn't something Wednesday and Thursday or Friday you're talking about on Saturday. Pride is something you do on Sunday in the fourth quarter. Get the throw, Marshall after it. Leonard Marshall. What a big play that is. They were in field goal range. He I'll took them right out. Maybe that's it. You talk about guys. Here's Leonard Marshall. And when he gets by and he gets to a point right here, he takes off and looks like a sprinter. He comes outside of Heller. Now watch at the point right there. When he gets by Heller, he can smell that quarterback. And he looks like a sprinter going down there. He wasn't standing straight up. He wasn't back on his heels. He was leaned forward going after someone. Third and 29, a loss of 15. That was a big, big play. Now they need another one. It wants a timeout. They have one left. Just started the fourth quarter. Answered by Cannon. Jim McMahon of the Eagles out with a rib injury. Jeff Kemp has taken his place. Turnovers, there have been five, three by the Giants, two by the Eagles. The Eagles well on top in total yardage. And they do have some fans here. They're outnumbered. She looks like she's in dangerous country. She knows it's third down, and it's a big down for the Eagles. Third and 29, Roy Green in motion. Kemp again is chased out of the pocket. <laughs> Calvin Williams gets it down to about the 35 and 11 yard gain. Well, Jeff Kemp on one play uh, lost the field goal uh, range when Leonard Marshall sacked him. And you wonder if that's enough to get him back in field goal range because this would be about a 51-yard field goal. 51, 52, something in that area. 50, 51, you're right. Uh, so they're going to try it. So Leonard Marshall came up with the big sack that put him out of it. Jeff Kemp got a completion that put him into this position. Music. Got it. One yards. The Eagles take the lead. 16-14. And Madden at Giants Stadium where the Eagles have just taken the lead for the first time today. Ruzek's third field goal. This one from 51 yards. The Eagles are up by two. 16-14. short yardage 
play. He puts Cratch in. Cratch goes in and plays guard. Maurice Carthon, the outstanding blocker, also in with Cratch. And then Roberts becomes the, the tight end. It usually means a running play. something on first down. See that good block by Jumbo Elliott. Jumbo Elliott, the left tackle, he's the guy that got movement. He got movement on Mike Golick, and that was the block. His block was the one that let him get the first down. That's the Giants' first first down of the second half. Eagles up by two points. in that inside hole, and you see that Clyde Simmons was going to take an inside move on him. Number 76 offense, moving prior to the Watch snap. Jumbo there, Five 76. He down. goes right there. He's taking away that inside move. See that, that, that club, the head slap, the arm under? Clyde Simmons was getting ready to do all that stuff to Jumbo, and Jumbo jumped, getting ready for Clyde Simmons. That'll make it first and 15, substitutes Megan arriving late, and he'll split wide to the left. Now Baker moves over to the left. Hampton remains behind, sends, and he has to take a timeout. Every time they go to some thing, three or four wide receivers to spread them out, it seems like they get fouled up and always have to take a timeout. What time today? 16, the Giants 14. Lawrence Taylor, you think he hadn't got some equipment on? Well, you know, they're still working on that brace. A lot of times, Pat, the brace will start to slide on him, you know, as you sweat and, uh, and your knee swells and stuff, and everything's changed, and it starts to move. And it, it looks like they keep taking it off to try and tighten it up. It's probably sliding up and down and sideways and getting in the way. And it's tough enough to play this game without all that equipment, but with all that equipment, it's very difficult. William Roberts. <laughs> 66 is still ineligible, they said. If they get a first down he, and he's eligible, he has to go out for a play. I guess he wasn't eligible, so they were just saying he's still ineligible. Anderson is back in the backfield with Sims now.
Texas Stadium. Tommy Agee, four yards and a touchdown. Looks to put a cap on a Dallas victory. The Saints on the verge of losing their fourth in a row. Still haven't clinched a playoff berth. We'll have all the highlights coming up on the post game. It's 23-14. Cowboys, Pat. Back at Giants Stadium at 16-14 Philadelphia. Those Saints are having all kinds of trouble. Anderson moved the pile a little bit. Reggie White on the bottom of the defense. Yeah, the Giants, I think, are just hanging by a string here. They, you know, they're the defending uh, Super Bowl champion. They got O.J. Anderson in there now, who was the MVP in the championship in the Super Bowl. They can see this season kind of getting out of their grasp, and they're kind of taking one last shot at it here. And if you're going to do that, the first thing you have to do is get in field goal position. Get in position to kick a field goal. Anderson, with those fresh legs, gets the carry again. He's close to a first down. This is going to depend on where they spot it, where that official puts his foot down. They get a right foot, they get a first down. In fact, they did get a right foot, and it is a first down. still has that movement and power in the hole. You see Pitts overruns the play. That creates a hole, and O.J. just knows just where you have to get that ball. He's always been that kind of runner, that instinctive runner. Funny they leave him over there in the cape most of the year, and now they really need one. And O.J.'s in there. O.J. three flicker back to Sim. because he was trying to go to Stephen Baker. It's a flea flicker. Baker is the guy who's going deep. You see him look deep, look deep. He doesn't have Baker. He comes off, off a flea flicker, going to your secondary receiver. It's a heck of a play by Phil Sim. Flea flicker, looking deep, trying to fool him. You got the patience to wait, to wait, to wait. Look, find your secondary receiver, and hit him on the run. Anderson. Defensive charge led by Pitts. You know the guy that set up that flea flicker was O.J. Anderson. Sure. One by running, so they, they had to tighten up. Two by taking that ball deep up in there and then getting it back. And these fans realize what O.J. Anderson did on this drive. He gets a rest and Hampton is back. That was their first pass completion of the second half. That flea flicker. Second and eight. Loosen the defense up, and that's the first time they've loosened it up at all this half. Hampton right at the line of scrimmage, stopped by Seth Joyner and Byron Evans. Third down, eight minutes left to play. The Eagles up by two. OJ staying over there, he's staying ready. I think they knew the thing they had to do was get that ball in field goal range, and they did it. Look at this statistic here. The Giants have run 22 times. The Eagle defense has made 12 tackles. That was the thing that Ray Hanley says. We have to get it where the Eagle defensive line doesn't make the tackle. Third and 10. Seems to throw it. Reggie White right on his face. The pass for Turner incomplete. Reggie White went inside Riesenberg. And it was that same move again. You start outside and you come in with that club. Reggie White needed a big pass rush. He gets it here. Watch him. He's up at the top of the screen. See, he starts outside. Boom. Clubs him. And then after the club, you go to the inside. I'll tell you, when he clubs him, Ooh. that guy goes. I mean, he's clubbing like a 290-pound guy. And he clubs him and flies through the air. will take over. Remember, Jeff Hostetler had been a holder for Matt Barr. Now it's Kavanaugh. That's not to make an excuse. Now the Giants offense did everything they had to. 
could have taken a shot on second down. Third down's a tough time to take a shot, but they did get in position to kick the field goal and missed it. Hold with a second. Camp headed for the sideline. Timeout. New York. That's their third and last. Sorry, timeout. It's a giant timeout, and that's timeout. all they have. behind the mass coming up after football it's the Chrysler Plymouth Tournament of Champions from Deer Valley Utah skiing champions from all eras go head to head in a handicapped dual slalom format format as they try for the gold once again skiing after football here on CBS The Giants probably didn't realize Lawrence Taylor wasn't in there. They only had 10 guys on the field. They had to take a timeout. And this has been a very difficult and frustrating season for the Giants. And I think that last drive kind of capped off a lot of things. Fires on first down and around the corner. Keith Fires. be able to do after any bad plays you have to be able to clean out your mind put it away and then start a new one and you know there's still seven minutes left the Eagles are only ahead by two and you can't get so down that you get out because they're still in good position all they need is a field goal to win this game the Eagles they have to think they need some first downs that's Carl Banks who's out of bounds went all the way out of bounds. Looks like he got scratched in the eye. That happened over here in the Eagles sideline. The guy had trainers and running over to get him. Banks is still pointing back at that sideline. That's the final score. Denver is in the playoffs. Let's see what happened to Banks. We can you're going to see right there. You see the finger in the eye? The right finger goes right in his eye. It was Antone Davis, the, the rookie right tackle. First and ten, Byers got 12 yards on that carry. He'll get another carry. Into the secondary is Byers, another eagle first down. comes up you know you talk about pride okay you missed a field goal now you have to go in there now you need your defense now you have to stop them the Eagles are on the other side okay we dodged a bullet there now we have to take the game over we have to take control of the ball we have to run it they're doing their part somewhere here the Giants defense has to make a play In the face of Bart Oaks would pretty well tell you the story Taylor is now back in the game they know if they lose today, they're not going to talk about playoffs anymore this year. And again to fire. This time hit right at the line of scrimmage by Pepper Johnson. Marshall trying to rip the ball loose from Byers. See, again, with, with six minutes left to go, time is not important yet. Although, they don't have any timeouts. But Lawrence Taylor's been having that knee taped and re-taped all day. And I'll tell you, he is just playing on guts alone because he's having a tough time out there today. He really, all day long he has. And it seems to get worse and worse. Yeah, he just can't move. And when you really can't move, then that makes you a sitting, a sitting target. receivers 
time to make moves. You see, like this, you can't cover them forever. They just keep running, 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 running. They go all the way across the field only because he scrambled out of there. First and 10 Eagles at the Giant 36. Now four and a half minutes left to play. The Eagles 16, the Giants 14. Joseph bounces away from two tacklers. And Joseph gets down to about the 32. Edward Johnson finally stopped it. He got four yards from nothing. I think that's what the Eagles are doing today. Just enough running and then Kemp's passing to keep taking time off the clock. Watch him here. Taylor breaks through free, but you see he just can't use that leg. So the minute he makes contact, boom, both feet come out of the ground. That's usually how you tell if someone really has a bad leg when they can't plant a foot and keep it in the ground. Second and six. At the Giant, 32. The Eagles, 16. The Giants, 14. Less than four minutes remain. Here's Joseph. Another Eagle first down. Pepper Johnson made the stop. Joseph got eight. I'll tell you one thing. They're going to talk about Matt Barr missing that field goal, and that hurt. But the other thing that the Eagles have done, they got that, and they've driven the ball down the field. I mean, and they've taken it to them. You know, some of you know, Kemp has made a couple passes, but boom, this, the offensive line has taken over. They're getting a push on the defense. The running backs are running hard and tough. Very dejected last year's hero. since last year's Super Bowl that the Giants have had available. Howard, Dorsey, and Leonard Marshall all at the same time. And that's her. That's right, because when Howard played the first couple games, Dorsey was out, then Dorsey came back, and Howard was out with back surgery. And that's been a big part of the Giants. They got caught up in that quarterback thing, but over the years, they had a dominant defense. This year, they don't have a dominant defense. Spent a lot of time on the field this year. This drive, four minutes and 50 seconds. Barnett, the man in motion. Hand off is to Joseph. To about the 17. Stop by Mark Collins. Joseph got four. They're still scrambling for the ball. See, this is where it where it comes in. You know, all those things you're talking about, pride, dedication, fight, teammanship, you need it in the fourth quarter. Two minutes remain. The Eagles up by two. Here at Giant Stadium, it's 16-14. The Eagles leading. Three field goals by Ruzek. Touchdown pass by Jeff Kent. decision halfway there like his his arm was going out there and about halfway he said no I don't want it he just stopped and threw it into the dirt which is pretty smart because when you get third down and you get down there you don't want to force anything that's what Rich Kotite is telling good that's okay that's okay Ruzik will try from 36 yards away with Jeff Fiegel's holding
53, you can move the ball down and, and get in a position to take some shots at the end zone. They don't need a field goal here. They're talking about a touchdown. That was a big drive by the Eagles. They kept the ball five minutes and 27 seconds to move down and get the field goal. And I think that was the key thing, probably more important than the yards or the number of plays or maybe even the field goal was how much time they took off the clock. Megan and Hampton will be deep for the Giants. And Ray Hanley's probably talking to Phil Sims over there that you don't have to get it all in the first play. You, know, you can have a little patience. Taylor knows that the end of 
first time ever. I look over in that bench and see a Reggie White. I think if I had to build a team and take one player, I'd probably take him. You certainly couldn't go wrong with that choice. Again, the final score from Giants Stadium was Philadelphia 19, the Giants 14. Stay tuned for the NFL Today postgame show. Greg and Terry will have all the scores, the highlights, and a complete playoff picture. You're watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. When you want everyone to know just how good the best-built and best-selling American trucks really are, how do you do it? You tell everyone about Ford. 18 to 14, the Eagles win it. They have won their sixth in a row. It is the first six-game losing streak for the Eagles since 1981, and they lost uh, quarterback Jim McMahon early on in this game with bruised cartilage in his chest. He did not return in the second half. Jeff Kemp got the job done for the Eagles, and you have to wonder how long can this Eagle defense carry the Philadelphia Eagles? Well, actually... I think they're just now peaking, and that's the key to getting into the Super Bowl is, is to play well early. You know, you're going to taper off a little bit, Greg, and then at the end, the last three, four weeks of the season, really turn it on, and they're really turning it on, and their defense is keeping them in there, and the key is, is Kemp or whoever the third string or fourth stringer is, is coming in and getting just enough points to win the game for them. And as we said, it's no easy task the rest of the way for the Eagles. They still have Dallas and Washington on their schedules. Let's show you highlights of this game at the Meadowlands today, and this is how Jim McMahon got hurt. Well, you know, a lot of people have asked me, did all the padding he have cause this injury? And very well could have, but he's out of the game. Phil Simms, 14-yard pass to Dave Meggett out of the backfield. That uh, combination clicked twice today. Rich Kotai didn't like that one, but he loves this Jeff Kemp TD pass. One thing Kemp does bring to you is this, scrambling, and then he does the thing that you're taught never to do. And what is that? Don't throw it across the field. All bad things happen, but every now and then something good something happens, good happen. like a TD. Yeah, meanwhile, the uh, New York Giants now have to sit back and watch the Atlanta Falcons game in Anaheim today against the Los Angeles Rams. If the Falcons beat the Rams, then the Giants are eliminated from all playoff possibilities this season. They lose to the Eagles today by a score of 19-14. to 14. Now, continuing down the scoreboard, in...